have been provided by a notice sent to the Star Ledger, the local source, and posted in the main lobby of the municipal building and on the township website. I would like to ask uh, David Penna of American Legion 225 to uh, please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I ask now for a respectful moment of silence for all those who serve our country both near and not so near. Thank you. Madam Clerk, roll call, please. Mayor Capitis. Here. Deputy Mayor Weber. Here. Committee Woman Du Bois. Here. Committee Min Huber. Here. Committee Min Kaiser. Present. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Um, we have some proclamations and announcements, actually just announcements. Um, we have uh, the Township extends its condolences to the family of Joseph Yee. 93, formerly of Springfield, who passed away on June 5th. Mr. Lee, <coughs> excuse me, and his family resided in Springfield for 45 years. And Joe was a very active member of the community, serving on the planning board and longtime volunteer at the Sour Bailey Civic Center, assisting in the literacy program and with senior tax form. So on behalf of the Township of Springfield, we wish uh, the Lee family, the Yee family, our sincerest condolences. Um, I have a couple of things that I wanted to run through tonight um, as far as announcements go, and I will get to the uh, drive-in movies. Uh, first of all, I just, again, want to uh, just say thank you for a, for a great effort, a great team effort by uh, my fellow Township Committee members and also uh, Mr. Basicolo and all of our department heads and all of our employees. Uh, during this uh, pandemic, um, everybody's been doing such a great job and we've been keep moving forward. And I think that's a testament to uh, our employees in our town. Um, just a couple of things that happened over the past month or so, or actually in the past couple of weeks, um, several members of the Township Committee uh, attended our uh, vigil at Mizell Field. It was a very, very uh, well attended event. We had over 300 people there. And uh, I was also proud to, uh, along with uh, Committeeman Kaiser and Committeewoman Du Bois, raise uh, for the second year in a row the pride flag at uh, Chisholm Community Center. I'd like to thank um, Committeewoman Du Bois for uh, starting that initiative. Um, and I thought these were two great events that we as a Springfield do what we do best and that celebrate our differences. And I thought that was very, very well received. And I'd also like to thank our young people for also coordinating the vigil uh, that again was very successful, very well attended. Um, on the business end, and I know that Mr. Basicolo and uh, Mr. Sclero will be talking about this. We have a couple of restaurants who are starting to uh, talk and discuss outdoor dining. You might've seen some signs of life there. Uh, also, um, the Township Committee was um, honored to participate in the grand opening of Wawa. It is official. The 900 store has come to Springfield. Uh, I think I've been there every day since it's opened, and it's been busy every time I walk in. And uh, I appreciate, again, uh, that business uh, making an investment in our town. And we even got a shout-out from the governor the day it opened. So we definitely appreciate the support. Um, as far as our recreation goes... Um, again, no, and to no, uh, no big, uh, no small effort of, uh, committeeman, uh, Weber, um, Ruby field is ready to go. Uh, we got a new fence, a new, uh, new fencing, uh, and it did, you know, repairs were made. It was spruced up. The infield needs to be dug and it needs to be, uh, filled in. But other than that, we're ready to go just in time as we start opening up baseball and softball. Uh, we have some drive-in summer movie dates that are coming. Uh, July 8th, uh, July 23rd, August 13th. Uh, I've also been talking to Mr. Sclera about Thursday nights downtown to start incorporating those events with that. Um, we also, the Township Committee also congratulated the Jonathan, High, the Jonathan Dayton High School class of 2020. Uh, we'd like to thank our first responders uh, for hitting the lights and sirens for our seniors to commemorate their virtual graduation. I attended that along with uh, Committee Woman Du Bois. Um, you might see on the agenda this evening, 
Um, we were looking at a proposal to look at the equipment in our courtroom. And again, we're not taking any action on this. We're just looking to perhaps add some additional cameras and make some slight improvements that uh, you know we might be interested in doing. But again, we're taking no action. It's just exploratory. And we also accepted a donation of some cameras and some video equipment uh, from our neighboring town of Union, again, in hopes to perhaps at some point build a mini TV studio. Um, our farmer's market's going to be happening on July 6th. Um, vote by mail is happening now. Election day is July 7th. So if you do have that vote by mail ballot, I encourage you, please, to, uh, you know, send it in and, and exercise your right to vote. If you have any questions, please see Ms. Donnelly. Um, finally, we'd like to wish a happy 20, 240th anniversary for the Battle of Springfield. And with that means the 10 year anniversary of our Springfield clock that's across the street on Town Hall that was dedicated 10 years ago today by the, the uh, Township Committee then. Um, and the very last thing I'm gonna say um, that I would like to share with everybody, just a reminder, we have our food drive happening uh, this Saturday, June 27th. Um, it's by Meet the Need. It is a not-for-profit organization that Springfield is partnering with. Uh, we want to donate, um, you know, food to families that are in need. Each box costs twenty-five dollars, and will feed families for about a week. Uh, family of four. Our goal is five hundred boxes. We are at seven thousand dollars. We are twelve thousand dollars left to go. Uh, actually, twelve thousand dollars is our goal. So we have about five thousand dollars left to go. We encourage you to give what you can to COVID families in need. Um, there are uh, ways to donate all over Facebook, Venmo, um, GoFundMe, uh, but it's Meet the Need, a, a nonprofit organization. And any bit that you can help, any any bit that you can help, uh, would, would would go a long way, and we certainly appreciate it. And uh, I know this was a longer announcement portion, but again, I just wanted to give you a glimpse and a small example of how much work is being done uh, in during this time. And again, it's a credit to uh, our township uh, uh, supervisors and employees. And it's, I also would like to thank the township committee that my, my the fellow uh, committee people I serve with up here uh, because they're just working just as hard as I am to make sure that the services that you come to expect are still up and running the best we can. Um, and with that, I will um, open up the meeting for comments on agenda items only. Anyone who has a comment to make on agenda items, um, go into the queue. Ms. Donnelly, I'm going to ask you if you could please limit that to three minutes. And if you can give me a big wave, something that I can see to let me know when the three minutes are up and I certainly will uh, stop it. So stop the uh, commenting for the next person. There's one person here Jerry, I ask that you please say your name and address for the record, please. Jerry Fernandez, 393 Hillside Avenue, uh, obviously Springfield. Good evening. Good evening. On the agenda, you have, um, I think you're hiring a new firefighter. Are we adding to the staff or is that replacing someone who retired? No, these are these are replacements. Our po the, the, last, um, the last couple of hires were replacements. Um, we had held off for a number of months uh, because of certain financial issues, but we're at a place now that we can move forward. So this is a replacement. It's not an additional firefighter. So, so our staffing will be the same as it was last year. The number? Um, I don't. We're, we're still. We're still actually right now. We're currently two under. Oh, dude. we have uh, this. What replacement will still leave us one under right now? When you say one or two under, what do you mean? No, we're two, we, we're two under. We have two squads that are that are each one man under. From this from new, staff last year, you mean, or what? Correct. Yes. So we're two less than we were last year. You're saying? Correct. Okay. So this one will serve a replacement, and we are still one under at that point. Okay. From last year. Okay. Co correct. Yes. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you.
Seeing no more questions from the public, I'm going to close. Mr. Mayor, would you like me to answer that, uh, the fire chief? Sure, if you can, if you'd like to, absolutely. Yes, we did lose a uh, a fireman. Did we had three firemen leave? Two retired and one transferred to another department. So the two we replaced last year, and the one that transferred re, re, um, transferred early February of last year. So the numbers will look off when you say when. Um, Mr. Fernandez is saying same number as last year. Yes, it is. Um, it's just they're staggered because one was early in the year and two were at the end of the year. So we're still now after this one, if we fill out the last shift of six, we'll be at the proper staffing levels. I also believe he supported it in 2015 to add the four firemen throughout the last couple of years. Thank you for your clarification, Mr. Palumbo. I appreciate You're it. Welcome. Thanks, Chief. Yep. Um, Moving on to reports, going on to the administrator's report. Good evening, Mr. Basicolo. How are you? Uh, good evening, Mr. Mayor. How are you? Good. Just a couple of things quickly, if I may. I want to bring you up to speed on our developments in town. The Larkin Building, which is on the corner by Walnut Court, Church Mall in between there. I spoke to Charlie. He's got steel coming this week. The next process will be pouring concrete. And then in six to eight weeks from there, framing will start. On the Gomes building, um, we had a couple of, on the Caldwell side, there were a couple of connections that they had to disconnect, which caused holes in that sidewalk that you cannot see. Those have been filled in now. National fence will be there tomorrow, actually. And what we're going to do is we're going to put a fence inside of the wall. So you'll have a walkway and that sidewalk will be open. The other thing is the asbestos on the other houses that were in there have been cleaned up and that's been approved by the state. So he can demolish those buildings at any time. We did get his foundation prints in, but there were some dimensions missing. So Mr. Disco asked him to go back and fill in a couple of items there. Those should be back by the end of this week. He can start then digging the foundation. So we should see some dirt leaving there shortly. On our SACS project, they're going before the Milburn uh, Board of Adjustments on the 6th. And Matt Jessup will be attending by Zoom that meeting should they have any questions for Springfield. Um, I did want to bring, if there's any questions on that, I will take them at this moment. If not, I wanted to bring Mr. Betcher on. We had a couple of things we wanted to talk about. One was our I and I. We had a phone conversation with Roots, and I wanted Robbie to, to bring up. We've got a drawing to show you and some information on where we are on the detectors for the I and I and also on the roads that we're planning on doing this year. So if there's no questions on the developments, I'll ask Mr. Betcher to jump in. Does anyone have any questions about, uh, for Mr. Basicolo on the developments or redevelopments? No, seeing none. Okay, you can uh, please feel free to move on. Thank you. Thanks, Robbie, you wanna jump in now? I see him muted. All right, there he is. Okay. I just got it. I just got it. <laughs> These, uh, okay, so thank you, John. Last meeting, I spoke very briefly about the I and I investigation that were back up and running after being uh, stalled due to COVID nineteen. Uh, so I just want to bring up a snapshot and show everyone where we're at with the study. Apu, are you able to do that for me? It is starting now, sir. Okay. Thank you, Apu. Okay. So basically what you're looking at is a snapshot of the entire township's uh, sewer system. So the area outlined in red has been metered, which is one third of the system located on the west side of town. The meters were installed on June 8th and will remain for a minimum of 90 days. The, the green squares within the red zone outlined in black are uh, the locations of the meters. So the company returns every 30 days to pull data from the meters. And at the end of 90 days, we'll review the data and relocate the, these meters within that same zone, trying to narrow down any I&I &I getting into the system. 
uh, rainfall is a key component in the study and could either lengthen or shorten the study depending on the amount of rainfall within the period of this study. Uh, the, so this study will probably go on till the end of the year because as we narrow it down, it'll go on for another 90 days. So I'm assuming that this particular study here will last to the end of the year where we'll get our results and find out whether or not we have any major infiltration into the system. Uh, the area outside that you're looking at in blue, those blue circles, they represent the manholes, but that's the other two thirds of our sewer system in town that we plan on studying over the next two years. So we're taking the first phase, we are moving forward. Uh, it's a slow process, but it's a very accurate process to narrow down where we're getting any infiltration into the system. Uh, does anybody have any questions for me on that? No, it looks to me it looks simple, straightforward, and 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 um, you know, great job. I love the I love the illustration. I, I like I'm I'm a visual learner, so I like how all of this lays out. I could definitely see um, your your plan and how it's uh, how yes. it's and, and, uh, I like it. So also, this is all being uh, plotted on GIS, which this will also be our. Uh, GIS system once we're done and we can add many layers to this system, which is going to help us be much more efficient with working on the sewer system. So uh, it's actually a pretty good plan and uh, I'm looking forward to finding something that will work for us and help us out moving in the future. Um, so if we have no questions. I, I do. I, I actually do because I'm working off of a cell phone here. I can't tell. What section okay. is that? Is that Baltrasol section? That is the, that's the, uh, the Irwin section, uh, okay. off Wentz Ave, that's, and the, the whole mountaintop. That's all the mountaintop. Okay. Yep. And the, you'll see some pink squares in there. Those have yeah. not been metered yet because of the position of the meters. So as we move them around for other manholes that have not been metered, and then you'll see a line on there where there's round pink, uh, circles that is a 6,000 foot uh, new line with uh, 40 gauge PVC that we know we have no problems with so we do not have to meter that so that'll help us reduce looking for I and I on that particular area and how long are we going to be there for at that grid what you mean this this one particular yeah. study yeah, yeah that we'll be to, and, yep we'll be on this to the end of the year because you constantly after you get the data, then you then you move around the meters and narrow it down and narrow it down looking for major I and I, and that's how you find it. That that section is 90 days that we're going to be in there. Okay, so every 90 days we'll, we go for results kind of thing, or? Every 90 days we go for results, and then we position the meters on the results, narrowing it down. Okay. It, right. This is the and this is the same system. This is a system that you've been using with with Milburn, right? This is what the equipment you share. Uh, no, the only thing we share with them is the actual camera. Uh, Milburn has not moved forward on this. They are investigating, looking into metering uh, their system because they have the same problem. But we're actually out in front of them on this, and uh, I'm sure I'll be speaking with them on this at some point. Cool. Thank you. Excellent. Thanks. There's nothing further on that. You want to go on to roads, Robbie? Yeah, I'm just going to go over the 2020 road projects. So um, I'll bring you up to date. The, the county has just completed Mountain Avenue from Corwell to Route 22. And they also did the short section of Shumpike from South Springfield to Mountain. That's been completed. DSE&G just recently completed Short Hills Avenue from the corner of Short Hills Avenue to Severna Ave, paving from the curb to the center line after they uh, replaced the pipeline, and Marsh Avenue eastbound from Short Hills Avenue to Malta, curb to center line. That's been done. We have a uh, we received a, a, a state grant in the amount of $370,000 for New Brook Lane, Benjamin Drive, that has been awarded 
our pre-construction meeting is on the 26th of this month. We received the county matching grant in the amount of 57,500 for the full length of Tucker Avenue. Uh, we received a community development grant in the amount of $105,000. We'll be doing Nelson Place, Country Club Lane, and we'll be doing some drainage work off Cottage Lane. Uh, our road program that we do every year will be paving Woodcrest Circle, Fernhill Road, Washington Ave, Skylark Road, and Persimmons Way. And finally, our road assistance program that we run every year will be paving Lang Terrace, Tucker Place, Lions Place, Gale Court, London Terrace, Gregory Road, and Valley Court. So we have uh, quite a list of work being done this year and a good portion of it will be done with grant money. Uh, if anybody has any questions on the road program. No. No, seeing none. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Butcher. Uh, appreciate Mr. the hard work as always. Mr. Basicolo. Let me just make one more comment. You talked sure. about the movies. We had a supply box car with 10 potential titles. They're going to come back to us shortly. Let us know three of them that are available to us. Once we get those, we'll post them right away just so everyone knows. Thank you. Any other questions for Mr. Basicolo? Seeing none, I'm going to move on to Mr. Scolera for a bit update. Good evening. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, so just to go on with the movie theme, we discussed it this morning at the bid uh, meeting. Um, we normally do our summer concert series where we do every Thursday night. We'll get a band, a town hall to play. So we're trying to coordinate maybe moving the band over to uh, the where the pool is and coincide it with the, the drive-in to make it a night. It hasn't been officially gone over there. There's some some things we have to go over in regards to it, but we do ha definitely have a band probably can start about 6 30, 7 o'clock at night, play for two hours and then let the movie roll. We think it would be a great night. Uh, but logistically, we have to figure it out. So we're not going to do the summer concert series, but we would definitely support and pay for from the bids perspective, uh, the uh, band uh, working on those nights that you guys are going to do the drive in. And again, the mayor uh, reached out to me on in regards. We thought it was a great idea. But again, from a logistics standpoint, we have to make sure people are okay with it. And uh, so that's what we're working on there. Um, again, we're really pushing the businesses to support and advertise. Um, right now, it's really important for them to get out there and let them know that they're around and available. Uh, right now, we have the, the grant program that they're applying for. Um, it's more retail, uh, where they'll send in their application and they can be approved up to $1,500 from the bid and we will pay for it. I think we have allotted about, and Scott, you can help me with this if, uh, uh, but I think we have allotted about fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 allotted towards the $1,500 towards um, helping them use, utilize the money. Um, a lot of, well, a couple of them are utilizing the 1,500 towards the tents. Um, I talked to Sophia's directly. Um, we're trying it right now. We've only got approximately two or three uh, local eateries that are taking advantage of using, utilizing tents. Right now we have Sophia's and TD Pizza. I talked to uh, TGI of Fridays in regards to it, uh, but again, every location logistically has their own issues, um, but we've been low in regards to people applying to do outside dining. So we're going to push them, not push them, but uh, you know, let them know, yeah, it would be a great idea to have their, their outside dining and everything if they can allot it in their parking lots and everything. And so people get out and again, it's a way for them to advertise, but we re definitely want them to get themselves out there and advertise because if they don't do anything over these past two, three, four months, uh, then people lose sight and they go to the places that are doing curbside pickup and outside dining and everything. So we're really pushing hard in regards to that. Um, we have the Springfield Bid New Jersey Facebook page. Please, if you haven't uh, joined it, please do. Uh, we have about 2,800 plus people on there, but that's where we put all our deals on. Everything going on from a business perspective where they can advertise and let you know what they're, they have to offer at discounts um, is on the Springfield Bid New Jersey Facebook page. We've also started Instagram um, with that also. We just got done with our, our gift certificate um, program where the eateries were giving $25 gift certificates for $15. And they've been that's been absolutely the second time we've done it. And majority of the 
uh, retail um, um, restaurant places have sold out in regards to it. So thank you, Springfield. You guys are doing a great job supporting all the eateries in, uh, in Springfield and again, keeping them going because obviously it was a huge, um, it was real hardship for them when they were shut down. Uh, thank you, John, again. I'm going to thank John again, Siclo, for his persistency um, on redevelopment. Um, a lot of people go, what's going on across the street when they go to Sophia's or any other redevelopment project, nothing's happening and you see it on Facebook. Let me tell you something. We are in contact, when I say we are in contact, John has been in contact with all the redevelopment uh, corporations in regards to getting it done. And it has been, a, it, it's always a slow process, but we're close. Uh, we've never been this close before. So hopefully uh, by August, and I don't want to put a date there, but um, the redevelopment will be happening and we'll be seeing it um, in the three locations. And then hopefully in the future, we have additional locations. But again, thank you, John. Uh, for doing a tremendous job in regards to it. Um, I did talk in regards to Stu Leonard's. Um, I actually had a conversation with Stu two weeks ago um, in regards to the reason why it wasn't working. Uh, they wanted a long-term contract, another 10-year deal with Stu, and he wants to do grocery slash wine. And he needs 35,000 square foot of space and bigger. So he didn't feel it was the right thing to do the, uh, the, the, the lease for a 10 year deal. Um, he was actually, because he's got the, um, the, uh, the, the liquor, um, um, help me with this, um, his um, license. license, liquor license, thank you. Um, so he said, maybe what we'll do is put a, find a 6,000 square foot location. We can still do business in Springfield and then hopefully look for, for sure something short term and then go big. He loves the area. He's committed to doing something in the area, but the thing is we want to keep him in Springfield as opposed to going elsewhere. So if anybody out there knows a 35,000 square foot place or bigger and a 6,000 square foot location, uh, please reach out to me. He gave me his phone number and he says he would definitely be interested in uh, reopening in Springfield. But right now the, the deal there going on uh, at Stu Leonard's where he was at was not, not conducive for what he wanted to do. Um, I think the location of the old Bill's Army Navy is between six and 8,000 square feet I saw on the sign. Okay, thank you, Erica. And again, that's something that- I've been I looking do. for you, Mike. You know, I've been emailing you. I've been trying to find places. Thank you so much. And that's what I'm looking for. So I don't know if he's looking specifically for Route 22, but he definitely was saying Springfield, and he loves the area and he thinks it's a, there's a lot of potential going on there. But um, yeah, just I'll, research it, send it out to him, and hopefully we can find uh, a location in Springfield where he can stay. Um, as opposed to anything else going on, I mean, I'll put on, I've been reaching out, I meet with the State Farm, I mean State Farm, the uh, local chambers on a bi-weekly basis, and um, we get together and we see what's going on successfully in their town. And um, it's been very successful. And then we bring it over to the bid and see how we can incorporate it. And then Scott and I, uh, we also try to incorporate it with the chamber, um, things that are going on specifically with them. Again, it's all about supporting the business. And again, nothing, nobody does it better than Springfield. You guys have been fantastic. I reach out to all the local businesses and eateries and everything. And uh, they can't tell you, they can't say enough on how they really spiked up in people coming out and supporting them. Um, just lastly, um, State Farm is, has a grant, a $25,000 grant that they're accepting applications on. And I've also talked to Erica, uh, stigma free. We're gonna put a grant in on that. We'll have that meeting Thursday, right, Erica? Yep. Uh, Thursday in regards to what needs to be done in regards to going on with that. And then we have uh, the uh, Springfield bid. We'll also put something in in regards to maybe something to support the local businesses. And then uh, lastly, the Springfield Hope. So we're gonna submit three grants uh, to the State Farm $25,000 grant, and then hopefully we can get, who knows, one, two, or three. So um, that won't be, what happens with that basically is that in October, people will vote, and you get 10 votes, almost like American Idol. Um, and then uh, after all the votes are in, then they will make a, they will make a winner, winners. They do up to 2,000 winners uh, by November 2nd. Um, other than that, um, that's all I have to say in regards to it, but keep it going, Springfield. You guys are doing a great job and everything in regards supporting all the businesses in Springfield. 
Thank you very much, Mr. Scalera. Um, great job as always, and we do appreciate your support and all the work you do with our businesses. Does anyone else have any questions for Mr. Scalera? I just got a comment from Mike. Uh, Mike, two, two things stuck out to me. Number one, um, what you said about you know the project across the street um, and how much time and effort goes into it that John puts into it and you put into it um, that we can't, you know, Sometimes things, it just happens the way it happens and uh, right. that there's not a lack of effort for it. And, and, and I, I got to tell you, I really appreciate you being at these meetings and, and giving clarification um, to what is really going on with things like Stu Leonard's that, you know, Stu Leonard's isn't being, you know, run out of town for a dollar store because of, you know, that's what you know we're pushing or whatever I, I i truly appreciate the clarification that you bring to the meeting and and, and setting the uh the agenda the record straight on a lot of stuff thank you no oh, thank you chris i appreciate that transparency is the key and communication that's our that's our main thing with the bid mm -hmm. thank you anyone else all right seeing none i'm going to move on to finance we have a motion please uh, Chris, uh, one moment. Um, yeah. Don't forget, we have Gramco on. Oh, I'm sorry. We do. I don't want to keep William hanging. No, you got. Okay. Uh, William, we have to apologize for you twice. I apologize the first time because um, I forgot about you and, and I need right. to move you forward. Um, I also need to apologize again because I know the last time you spoke to Springfield, it was back in March, and then this pandemic yes. happened. And. Um, you know, obviously things, things change, but um, I wanted mm -hmm. to bring you on tonight. I wanted you to um, speak to the township committee and speak to me and kind of walk us through this quote. Uh, sure. Obviously we're looking to upgrade our council room with some, uh, you know, additional cameras, better quality cameras, uh, you know, more, more choices, more flexibility with our meetings and how we go on and, and, and tape them and broadcast them. And I was just wondering if you might be able to, again, uh, just go through what you saw, what you think the best options are for us uh, in terms of our council room and what your suggestion is and through this, uh, through this process, we're not going to take action on this tonight. This is just a presentation that, um, you're giving to um, the public and also the, the the township committee people just just what you saw because I know we made this request of you probably about in February and we're just mm -hmm. talking about you now so please okay can you hear me yeah and we okay can great here and in the thanks again I, I appreciate it thank you for inviting me to the meeting I'm uh, representing Gramco and Mr. Basicola has been a big help um, I came for a walkthrough it was I think back in February uh, before everything hit. And I uh, just uh, took a look, like a little lay to land, so to speak, walk through just to see what you have currently. And uh, John had brought me in to basically say, look, this is what we're doing. Uh, how would Gramco do it? How do we, how'd you normally do it? And a uh, little background on us. We've, we've been in business since 1978, uh, serving New Jersey. We're at a Clifton. And uh, we work with municip municipalities, uh, we're police departments as well, um, specializing in court and council recording. You've been a customer, uh, Springfield has been a customer for a long time. I don't even have a date on it, but 10 years plus as far as recording the court proceedings with Mary Jo and uh, the council meetings as well. Um, and the trend over the last couple of years has been to, to migrate to uh, meetings, um, streaming meetings rather, and recording video, which has been a big change in the last couple of years. Um, and uh, when I did the walkthrough, I saw what you have currently. And what you do have currently is more of a broadcast video setup. Um, you have a rack in the back, an equipment rack in the back, which uh, you know we would not utilize. What we would do we would be come in and basically do it the way we would do it. How uh, we've done it, you know, dozens and dozens of other, and dozens and dozens of other municipalities. Uh, we would incorporate a, a two camera system because of the nature of the shots that you want to get, the camera shots. Um, you'd get one wide shot of the dais, which is a traditional shot. And another another shot from the wall. I'm sorry. Oh, I thought I thought someone had a question. And, and a second camera to get uh, an additional shot, I believe, of the uh, the public speaker. If that rings a bell, John. I mm -hmm. think there was a right. Yes. Okay. Um, now, just to walk you through how this works, and you know the advantages of doing it with uh, with the Liberty system and the Liberty system itself is the recorder that you currently use, the recording system you currently use to record the court meetings and the, uh, the council meetings. 
um, what you would be doing is now adding a video element to the Liberty system, which you're already familiar with. Um, we take the two cameras and I sent John, just to preface this, uh, I sent John some um, supplemental material. He can you know, send to everybody uh, in, in time, I guess, which kind of walks through the signal path of how everything's gonna work. I don't wanna you know, bore you with all the details, but I'm just gonna give you the broad strokes. Mm -hmm. uh, and basically, you know, you're gonna have the two cameras. They're gonna go uh, along with the audio into the, uh, the Liberty PC, the Liberty program, which will then, um, then branch out. You'll record to the hard drive of the Liberty PC, the meetings for posterity. Um, this system will be recording video for the council and continue to record audio for the court as it's always been recording. I believe there's also gonna be some board meetings recorded. Some, there might be some other users, other meetings be recorded, uh, but those are the, the general users right there. Mm -hmm. um, so you've got your recording going to the Liberty PC and then now you'll be able to stream and we'll set this up for you, stream to YouTube. Um, you will also have the option to, if you'd like, you can simultaneously stream to Facebook um, as far as simultaneously streaming, you're going to be looking at, uh, that would be utilizing a, sec a separate program called Restream. And I can go through all this at a later date, but there would be a monthly fee with Restream if you want to do a multi-stream. Mm -hmm. And that's completely up to you. Um, so as far as broadcasting to cable, I spoke with Jen and she told me that you're currently uploading your, 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 uh, your meetings to cable. Yeah. After the fact, and that will continue to go like that. You wouldn't, we are not a broadcasting company. We, we do not, we're not a cable company. So we're not going to help you broadcast live to cable. If that's, if that's the option you're looking for, we, we don't do that. We can't do that. But I don't think you're doing that right now. What I believe you're doing is after your meeting, you're then uploading it to a cable channel, which yes. we can do for you. We can yes. hand you a, a, a MPEG-4 or a WMV file, just as I think you're doing right now. And you hand that to your cable company that takes care of your cable. They handle the scheduling, they handle the broadcasting. We don't do that. We just hand you the product, the okay. meeting on a media. So um, so that handles your broadcast. Your, your live streaming goes again to YouTube. And if you're okay with that, it ends right there. If you want a multi-stream, we then bring in a third party, which we will connect you with. We don't make any money off that. We don't, it's just someone we have seen out there. They're called the Restream. They help just do dual, um, do, facilitate dual streams so it's mm -hmm. just an option if you want to stream to facebook as well as youtube simultaneously okay so those are your options that's what our system can do it's going to be hd it's going to be high definition um the, the I, I guess one of the, the big the big pros here is going to be the fact that there's a familiarity with our product it's been in place for 10 years so um that there's that um the, jen told me she works the the video for the meetings and she would continue to do so we would train her on it. There's a joystick involved, which she would be able to take over a camera at one point, actually physically, you know, move the camera around if she'd like to. But at its core, it's really easy to use. You set up presets. You could just sit there and say, there's live shot number one, there's mm -hmm. live shot number two, and you have one, one live camera. And although you have multiple cameras, you have one live shot. Mm -hmm. And you could be able to go to camera two at will with the press of a button. And there is, a, a, there is about a one to two second lag when switching cameras. So sure. I just wanted to put that out there so you're aware of that. And I made a video, uh, I'm sorry, one of our techs made a video for you to view. I sent the link to John. You can see exactly what the interface looks like, what you can expect with the lag and okay. uh, some references as well. Okay. Yeah. I, I certainly appreciate all your presentation. I, I just had a couple of questions. Um, sure. A lot of what you already described you know, we have the capability of doing already, uh, mm -hmm. you know, um, the, the, the multi-stream and all of that stuff. Um, I, I particularly was interested in, in adding cameras, um, maybe adding a graphics package. Uh, do you, do you do anything like that? Can you, can you add just a camera to our existing system or one or two cameras to our existing system that we have? Can you, do you sell any graphics packages that we can use to enhance our broadcasts? No, I, I'll be honest. We don't do anything with graphics packages. I think that that falls solely on the um, shoulders of like a broadcast type situation, uh, which is, I mean, you do have in place some broadcasting equipment. I'm okay. not sure. Of, I'm not sure of your relationship with the vendor. 
So I don't know, you know, what they can do for you or what, what they can't do for you. But graphics packages is not like it's not our bailiwick. It's not something we do. Um, we just, you know, we give you a good a good shot, a good camera shot, along with uh, you know, recording to the Liberty PC mm-hmm. and the streaming capability. That's that's what we offer. As far as taking uh, adding to your your current system again, we mm-hmm. that's not something we would do either. It's kind of now we we kind of come in with a package. These are the cameras we're familiar with that work with our system. This is you know how we tie it all together, and this is what our you know what our system is spec'd out for. It's okay. a, it, it's uh, and, and for what it's worth, it's you are part of the SCNJ, which which you might be aware of, um, Educational Services Commission. Uh, it's it's um, kind of like a state contract and cooperative yeah. pricing rather. And this is this does fall under ESCNJ. We are a vendor, so just want to make you aware of that. So that's if you see that number at the top, that's our cooperative number yeah. for ESCNJ. No, I'm familiar. I appreciate it. Thank yeah. you. I appreciate you taking the time to welcome us through. Uh, does any of my colleagues have any questions? No. Okay. I just I just didn't want to overpromise. I don't want to tell you there's something we can do that we can't do. Fair I mean, enough. Listen, I, I appreciate yeah. you taking the time and uh, we have your quote and I thank you for uh, talking us through it and, and your capability and, and I appreciate it. And uh, we'll certainly, uh, sure. we'll either myself or John will follow up with you in a couple of days. Okay. Thanks again for the opportunity. I appreciate it. Oh, thank, thank you for being here. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. Take care. Thank you. All right. Thank you for that reminder, Mr. Basicolo. Uh, let's go to finance. Uh, give me a sec- second. I will make a motion uh, to accept the total amount of payroll and invoices from the period of May 28th through June 23rd, 2020, in the amount of $1,176,471.76. Okay. I will second that. Roll call, please. Committee Ming Kaiser? Uh, yes. Deputy Mayor Weber? Yes. Committee Woman Du Bois? Yes. Committee Ming Uber? Yes. Mayor Katz? Yes. We have one ordinance for first reading. Uh, Madam Clerk, can you read the ordinance by title, please? Yes. Ordinance 2020 15. This ordinance amends the code of the Township of Springfield, New Jersey at Chapter 15, Property Maintenance, to prohibit the planting of new bamboo and restrict the spread of existing bamboo. Um, Do I have a motion? I will make a motion. Give me a chance. (laughs) No, we're going to do discussion. We'll have discussion. I wanted to do the motion first. Motion, uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, as read by Madam Clerk, Ordinance 2020-15, publication of local source July 2nd, 2020, with final hearing on July 17th, 2020. That's 14th. I'm sorry. My uh, mistake. All right. 14th. Do I have a second? Do I have a second? Sure. Um, so this ordinance came about by me. Uh, I received a couple of phone calls about the um, growth of bamboo. And this is something I didn't know. Uh, um, that actually I found quite interesting. There's, there's several residents, and, and this may be more, more than I realize, uh, that have growth of bamboo in their yards, and it can become, become very troublesome. Um, one resident in particular shared some videos with me, shared some information, uh, and I you know, turned this over to our, our health officer, our BA, and our uh, attorney who obviously crafted the ordinance, and it was... Um, quite, uh, you know, quite thoughtful. And uh, I thought a good idea. So I wanted to put it on for consideration. Anyone have anything? No. Uh, I'll take a second. Uh, Chris, okay. you go first. You go first. No, you know, I, I, I it, it makes sense. You know, I, I live next to, uh, there's a few houses, about three, four houses away from me that have bamboo in the backyard. And it hasn't crept up to my yard yet, but uh, two houses already have had bamboo popping up all over their yard, not in a specific spot. I mean, this stuff pops up everywhere. Their entire yard gets these little bamboo stalks throughout, uh, you know, about a hundred different feet, no rhyme or reason. So it's coming to my house soon. I, I can't stop it, but 
if we can stop it from everybody else, I'm 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 good with it. Sure. Anyway, Alex, Alex, did yeah, you have- no, no. Hey, I, I, when I first saw it, I, I said, oh, man, are you kidding me? This is just uh, government at its worst, you know, in, in, infringing on somebody's right to, to plant. But I, I, I did do my uh, due diligence and, and started reading on it. And, and it is, Chris, like you said, it's quite fascinating. I mean, when you really dig into this, this is a, a, an issue that has arisen across the state in New Jersey. Like, There's numerous articles. Um, more so, you know, if it's keeping the peace between neighbors, it seems to get uh, uh, throughout the uh, get into some really big feuds about it. It, it, it seems online. So I, I think it's certainly a logical step. I mean, we are we're nowhere near the leadership on this. This has been throughout the state. Dozens of municipalities have already done something about it. And, you know, and, you know, going back, you know, just to just to throw a slight dig at our former governor. You know, he, he is one, one of his first things in office when he did, he, he, he dismantled the, uh, a council that was supposed to take care of invasive species. And invasive species could be from insects to bamboo, and that causes problems. Now, bamboo is certainly not the number one issue in New Jersey, but it's certainly an invasive species. So just once again, the legacy of Chris Christie and, uh, and what he's done, because Every other state around us has a council that tackles this. And I, I believe Connecticut handled bamboo at a statewide level, but New Jersey has had to handle it at a municipal level. So I'll let those uh, words said, and I plan to vote yes on this and then in the second reading. Thank you for sharing, Alex. Anyone else? No. No. Seeing none, roll call, please. Miniman Huber? Yes. Miniman Kaiser? Yes. Committee Woman Du Bois. Yes. Deputy Mayor Weber. There you go. I think he froze. froze. No, it's on you. Yeah, yes. 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 Mayor. Sorry. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Now, thank you. We have the following resolutions I'm going to propose by consent agenda. If you have anything you'd like me to pull, please uh, let me know when I get to it. Resolution 220, 184, 185, 186, 187, 188, 189. Okay, roll call. Um, I'm sorry. Um, do I have a motion, please? Motion, Mr. Mayor, for resolutions 2020, 184, 185. 186, 187, 188. You, you broke up on me. I want to pull 184. Okay. Uh, sorry. So it's okay. Uh, one, uh, so sorry, 185, 186, 187, 188, 189. Okay. Do I have a second for I'll resolution? Second. So we have a second on resolutions 185 through 189. Roll call, please. Committee Min Huber? Yes. Committee Woman Du Bois? Yes. Committee Min Kaiser? Yes. Deputy Mayor Weber? Yes. Mayor Capitis? Yes. Resolution 2020 184. Madam Clerk, please read this resolution by title. Resolution 2020 184. This resolution approves the hiring of Brandon Menreza as a probationary police officer. Um, hey, motion. Chief, Chief Cook, you there? Yes. We have that motion first, don't we? We have that yeah, motion. motion. Sure, yes, we could do a we could do a motion, absolutely. All right, motion for uh, 2020-184 resolution. Correct, do I have a second? Second. Second, second by committee woman Du Bois. Uh, go ahead, Deputy Mayor Weber. Uh, Chief Cook. Yes. Can you just run over real quick? I know um, just for the clarity of people watching and, and, and anybody that might be interested, um, how we're hiring him and how many we're short currently and uh, just on the staffing of the police department so, so we, we can get some clarity on that, please. Sure. Um, our staffing had been 
uh, for the past few years at 44 officers. We had a retirement in 2019 uh, that we had not replaced. And then I recently had another retirement in May and an officer transferred to another department in April. So I've been three officers down um, from my normal staffing levels. Uh, at the last meeting, we did okay, Hire the we approved, well, you guys approved um, hiring three officers, two of those officers, we knew who they were gonna be at the time. And there was a resolution saying that there would be uh, a third officer we just didn't name that person at that time. Um, and this this resolution 184 now names that third officer. And this brings our levels back to what we had previously at 44. Okay, thank you. Financially, it's, it's a win all around. The officers that left were at a much higher pay level um, and the officers coming in and that higher pay level was budgeted for already. And the officers coming in are at a uh, starting level. So it's the lowest level that there would be. So so just, just to be clear, because actually we had uh, two of them, two, three of them leave it at top, uh, top pay that we had not replaced. Is that correct? Or two of them that were at um, top? Two, two of the three were. The, the third officer that transferred to another department, he, he was a few levels up from probationary. Um, so you, you're looking at significant savings as well. Okay. Obviously not as much, but it's still significant. Um, perfect. Uh, I don't have any other questions. Uh, thank you. Thank you guys though, for um, just being a great police department. Thank you. I appreciate it. And thank you for uh, your support, everyone. Any other questions? No. Roll call, please. Uh, yes. Committee Min Huber. Yes. Committee Woman Du Bois. Yes. Committee Min Kaiser. Uh, yes. Deputy Mayor Weber. Yes. Mayor Capitis. Yes. All right. I got one question before we go on. Thank you. Sure. It's for John. John, and I forgot to ask it. Um, have we gotten all the people in town the refunds for the pool and that? Is it all done? As far as I know, I'll check with Adam, but yes. Yeah, I'm gonna make sure they all get, you know, they have their money back. And we're, we're not holding there. anything on purpose, but I'll check with Adam yeah. in the morning just to confirm. All right, thank you. And Mr. Mayor, before you go on, can I just bring up one thing? We were we were talking about a tree ordinance back in February. We got sidetracked with the COVID. Yeah, it's not gone. That I've been working with uh, Robbie Betcher, Mike Disco, Bob Brennan, myself. I don't know if we had anybody else. Uh, Bob Herbert, our zoning officer. We should have a revised ordinance to bring before you at the next meeting. Great. Thank you, John. You're Thank welcome. You. All right. Um, the discussion action items we covered earlier um, this evening. Um, correspondence, we have two. I'm sorry, sorry, we have one. Cranford Ordinance 2020-09 adopted. Amended code part three land development to delegate certain planning board duties to code review committee. I ask that that please be received and filed. Um, now we're going on to uh, public comment on any governmental issue. Um, I do see um, several, actually not several, I see two right now. Um, let's go to uh, Dominic Sayuda of 97 Colfax Road. Uh, Apu, when you get a chance, Dominic Sayuda. That's not the that's not the the, the username. He's we, we he's, adjusted it. He, he's good to hello. go from there. Okay, he's ninety seven Colfax Road, Miss Donnelly. Hello. Good evening. Hi. Does Hi. the town have a, Does the town have a grant writer? Um. I, yes, we do. Yes, we okay. do. Okay. I was just curious on that. And the pool, is there any action with the pool? Is it going to open or what's the story with that? Um, we're, we're still in discussion. We're hopefully we will have some information to the committee by the end of the week. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Mayor, can I answer the grant? Because I know the bids have got the grant going on and the State Farm grant. Sure. You know, it's not a writer that's really needed for it. It's more of an application. So specifically with the bid, 
um, applying for the grant is an application and it pretty much is being approved. So just an FYI with that. Sure. Thank you. Hey, Mr. Mayor, also yes, if, if at the end of the week we get some good results about the pool, we can have a meeting next week and we can approve whatever we have to approve. Am I correct? Yes, we can. Um, again, we were we were in discussions about things. And, and as, as Mr. Basicolo said, he's been in conversation with the Y. Uh, we have no information to report yet. Um, you know, obviously people will have questions that we don't have all the answers to yet, but as soon as we do, we're going to make that known. And then obviously we'll have the meeting to make that discussion. Um, okay, uh, Jerry, you're next. Name and address for the record, please. Sure, Jerry Fernandez, 393 Hillside Avenue. Um, real quick, the the summit the, with the Y, how, how would that work? Would they pay us to use the pool facility, or is there a cost to, for us? That's there, one there, Why don't I let you You know what? Is it okay if I give you my questions and then I could hear the responses? Because three minutes is a little quick. Sure. Okay. Um, Alex, I'm wondering if you could tell me in the capital fund, because looking back at the budget, there was 1.1 million set aside for a pool. And I understand how the capital budget works. You know, it's not money we're using. It's there if we need. But when we put that high an amount, usually there's something we're using it for. I was just wondering what that was set aside for. And Mayor, in your email that you sent out in reference to the pool, you mentioned that 150,000 was taken out of the general fund to uh, cover the cost for a pool for last year. And, and I, I understand the numbers that, that were drawn and I, I agree with most everything except for that statement. Was that taken from the general fund or from the pool surplus? And um, I know it was I, short, I know it was short about 21,000, but just want to be clear if that was from the general fund or not. Okay, Thanks. you got it. Um, I'm going to let um, Ms. Sherry uh, answer those questions. And obviously Alex, if you want to jump in, uh, feel free. Um, uh, you know, but Miss Sherry, if you want to um, um, address those two items first about the capital budget and then about the uh, general fund, if you wouldn't mind. Absolutely, uh, Mr. Mayor. The the monies put or in the capital plan or just a plan. There's no specific project. It was kind of just carried over from prior years, just to cover our bases should something come up and we may need to spend money on the pool. So it's not, it, and a capital plan can never be enacted until by re, by ordinance and re, and then followed by a resolution for any actions on that. You know, can I can I ask you a question then on that? The uh, the current bond, the the amount we're bonding now, besides the pool house, I know prior to the pool house we had other bonds for repairs. Are they still being paid, or those, were those paid off already? The prior bond was paid off. We just are now uh, paying off the um, major pool house renovation. Okay, thank you. And your other question was about the money sent well, over. It, yeah, in the email it said one hundred fifty thousand was taken from the general fund to for the for the. Uh, uh, for you the have budget. to forgive me. I don't have the budget document in front of me at the moment, but the general fund was budgeted an amount similar to that uh, um, that we had to pay to make up deficits from the prior year and make sure that the bond payment was covered this year. Right, but I said last year, the township had to cover the financial shortfalls of the pool with 150,000 taken out of the township general fund. Yes. That would, yes, that's reflected in this year's budget for any negative uh, implications from last year. And to make sure the pool balances for this year. For 2020. Uh, make sure I'm saying that right. It, right, because the pool did not make enough money last year to cover its responsibilities this year. Right. So was it taken out of the surplus and left with 21000 short that's in the budget for this year? The way the budget works, the 21000 is has to be paid out of the... It's included in this year's pool budget. And if you look at the pool budget, there's a, a line item that says receipt deficit from the current fund. That's coming right. from an appropriation in the uh, current fund. 
So the general fund is has to send a check over to the pool fund. Thank you. That's three minutes. I appreciate it. Thank you, Ms. Sherry, and thank you, Mr. Fernandez. Oh, okay. Um, what about that, what about the summit? We we answered that already, but it's no. It, I mean, is there a cost to us, or or do no, they, we're, 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 details yet, Jerry? That's still being okay. worked out, and as soon as that's done, we will bring that to the committee. Hopefully, in the next couple of days. Okay. Thank you. Um, and we have Ms. Rappaport, please. Okay, Ms. Rappaport, you're unmuted. Ms. Rappaport? Ms. Rappaport, you're on mute. Up, oh, no, nope, you're still muted. Ms. Rappaport, we can't see you, but we also can't hear you. Um, it's okay if you we don't see you, but you're gonna have to unmute yourself. There we go. Ms. Rappaport. Okay, fine. Um, yes. Hello. Hi. Uh, hi. Give us your name and address for the record, please. Okay, fine. Barbara Rappaport, 50 Country Club Lane. Um, my question is the uh, pool opening, is that depend upon uh, the wise decision of whether or not they want to be involved, that that's about the only way this is going to happen? Yes, we're trying to work something out with the YMCA to see if we can both have a, a, a pool season and and also uh, run camps as well for the for the children. Oh, so because my second question was if you were just considering, you know, a pool camp or if it was general. We're we're currently again there was a survey sent out uh, gauging the yes. wants needs for both the pool and the camps. And that, those results are being talked about with Mr. Basicolo right now. And as soon as we have more information, it's going to be shared with us. And uh, if we need to take action, we'll do so as soon as possible. And I know that um, those who had made an early member or extra early membership, uh, I know they've been promised their money back. But I mean, Honestly, I haven't joined yet because of this. But for those who have, I mean, what's going to happen? Their money's going to be refunded and then they're going to have to go and pay again? Or Yes, yes well, well, that's part of it. We're, we, before the YMCA option came to us, we had refunded, uh, again, out of an abundance of caution, we refunded everybody's money and, and we, had a, we had a question a couple of uh, residents ago um, all, or actually, I'm sorry, Committeeman Huber asked the question, um, all residents should be refunded. If they're not, they're asked to reach out to the Recreation Department. Uh, if and when uh, a positive result comes out with the Y, we will certainly direct our residents of the process and procedure for signups and payments for the Y when applicable. All money has been refunded, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. All, everybody who put out money for either the pool membership or, or pool camp, that money has been refunded. Okay. And you talk about a full uh, season. Now, um, well, the adjustments will have to be made because the season actually starts a uh, uh, Memorial weekend. Yes, that, that, so is, that is part of the conversation that Mr. Basicolo is having with the Y right now. Okay, all right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, before I conclude, I, I just wanted to uh, just mention again, um, the, the reason the company Gramco was uh, part of the meeting tonight, um, you know, back when we had our work sessions, you know, it was a goal, thanks to the suggestion of committee Min Kaiser, uh, to have each work session have a topic of discussion. Um, the, the March scheduled topic of discussion was our TV studio uh, and exploring options 
having to upgrade um, our courtroom if possible and maybe add a camera or two. Uh, there was talk about a television studio. Um, there was a lot of possibilities discussed. And I know that the TV studio was kind of put off and the equipment was put off. And I wanted to bring Bram, Bramco on uh, to make their presentation about their quote. And I, and I know that uh, there were some questions to me, and I'll just come out and say it to me, it doesn't look like Gramco uh, fits the needs that certainly I had in mind, but obviously I'm only one of five. Um, my needs, and again, my, my um, I don't know how anybody else feels, I'll just put it at that, but that wasn't really what I had in uh, the intent and purpose of it. Uh, I don't know if anybody else wanted to jump in and say what they feel. Uh, Committeeman uh, Kaiser, please. Yeah, no, hey, hey, hey. Mr. Mayor, exactly why I kind of held off till the end, because uh, I, I felt a little uncomfortable bringing it up uh, 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 with with Mr. Wood, you know, kind of because I thought it was going to be a different discussion. I think I had the same interpretation as you, and and hey, maybe that's just we had a different uh, in mind and didn't realize that. Um, but yeah, I, I kind of just wanted to make that point. I, I, it sounded like to me all this stuff we already have the capabilities. But we just want to enhance what we already have. And, and I do like that mission in general. I think, you know, if we can stream it better, but also make it look pretty, it, for lack of a better term, I, I think that's the direction where we want to go. And more in the direction of we want to produce some new content and be able to reach out and communicate better. And this just seemed uh, kind of almost like a, a duplication of what we already had. Um, with that comment, I just was wondering, you know, I, I mean, you watch it kind of on YouTube and, and sometimes going back and you, you see it on broadcast. It, it's kind of grainy. I, I don't know if there's necessarily we can do upgrades or the union equipment that we may have had if it's better. But, you know, that that's something that we should consider because it just seems like nowadays things can be, uh, you know, better quality than what we already have. I, I, I agree with you. With you and I, cameras, Alex. Uh, a couple of a couple of things, Alex. First off, I, I think that I agree with you. I, I wanted to make it look prettier. I wanted to add graphics. I wanted to add another camera, certainly to the courtroom, so we can perhaps get a better view on the the comments from the public. You know, we have some tables in front of the dais. Maybe we can make better use of it. Uh, you know, maybe perhaps put a camera in front of the dais. Maybe put a camera behind the center. You know, or or another camera. You know. And we wanted to talk to some professionals about it. Um, as far as the video feed itself, um, right now, Comcast says the, they only broadcast in um, regular definition and they can't broadcast in high definition. I, I don't believe that. To be I think clear. we should be grateful for that. I don't think I want to be in high definition personally. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I don't believe that. And that's certainly a fight for another day. Um, but I think what Mr. Bosiclo was going to allude to the donation that we just got um, where I think three, at least three high definition cameras. So if we decide to do something like original programming, um, we will have uh, HD cameras in our quote unquote studio. And, and for, for those curious about monies uh, for this, um, because we have our own station uh, and we have uh, the township has their own channel, we do have our own um, line item where the local cable company gives us, I don't want to call it a stipend uh, or, or uh, they give us monies per year. And the, these monies haven't been touched in quite a long time. And from what I do understand, and I'm sure Miss uh, 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 Miss Sherry the next time can get those numbers for us. There are several hundreds of thousands of dollars in there for us to, um, you know, make some make some purchases if we need to. So, so that you know, it's it's bright, certainly bright. Go ahead, Alex. I'm sorry. The camera, no, the camera that are there now, are an improvement from what they were. Linda, if you remember, we upgraded. I don't know how many years ago, but we did upgrade years ago from the last one. This was this was supposed to be better than what we had before. Right. Or whatever it was. Right. Just, just, just lastly, uh, uh, real quick. I, I mean, I, I know early on I, I've heard discussions, but maybe with a, a, a new regime change over at the high school, you know, I know they have a, a, a program for television. I was part of it when I was there. And, uh, 
and it was old equipment back then, but I, I believe they've made upgrades. You know, we should start to maybe explore, you know, maybe, maybe they'll, there's students over there that want some real life experience and maybe with a, a, a change over there, we can once again, explore some kind of not shared service, but maybe some kind of co-op or internship program where they can come and, and produce kind of a show with whether it's the mayor or, or, or stuff and help edit in that sense. So that's something that maybe we can explore together. Absolutely. That's something that I, that's obviously <laughs> something that's actually, hey, Christopher. Something, hey, you know, Alex, to be honest with you, that is something that I, that I campaigned on three years ago. And uh, when I do, you know, our new superintendent starts in July. And when I do meet her, that's obviously one of the, the talking points that I'm going to bring up to her along with other things. Um, there's two things I'm going to bring up. A, I'm going to bring up, uh, you know, our support of something for the seniors in July. And my second point is going to be, you know, working together. And maybe it is a shared service, you know, to, to, to have the, the collaboration between our town and the school studio because we have the ultimate ability to broadcast their programming. So I think that'll be a nice touch. Mm -hmm. Well, Chris, uh, we talked about it last meeting about – Union's donation for us, or did it's already here. It was picked up yesterday. Is the, but I, did did we talk about it last meeting? We talked about it. Right? Yeah. Yes, we did. Get a reso to accept it. I'm gonna I'm gonna be going over there this week to check it out. I'd like to bring in uh, uh, both Joe Voorhees and Apu have graciously uh, agreed to look into whatever we need to do. Um, I, I certainly know the station manager over in uh, Union. Uh, he's offered his uh, expertise, so uh, I don't doubt that this could be very beneficial moving forward for for both us and the school system. Just just to give a a, a quick refresher for anybody that might have missed it, uh, sure. we got three cameras, four cameras. I believe at least three and a switcher. So so we got some equipment from Union that um, they were very generous enough to to donate to us. Uh, so that follows up right on what Alex is saying about, you know, that yeah. station works perfect. There is an area. And, and again, all this all happened before the pandemic hit. There was actually an area that me and Mr. Basicolo actually um, uh, saw in town hall that could either be a temporary or a permanent, if you want a TV studio. And again, I'm just saying, you know, we've talked here before about, wanting a information officer or some type of public uh, information officer. And I'm guessing that public information officers nowadays, uh, certainly along with social media, have some type of video experience with them uh, because it's kind of like a one man band in that, and so to speak. So I'm sure if we eventually do not saying that we would, but if we do talk about and we do discuss a public information officer, I'm sure we can add the TV studio or TV editing or whatever relationship with the high school in that conversation in terms of job responsibilities. So a lot of exciting stuff for sure. Okay. All right. I think, I think. I'll go for a German. Huber is done. That's the German. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Don't forget to vote, everybody. Have a good night. <laughs>